Okay, um, welcome to lecture 16. And uh, today we want to tackle a very, very practical problem. And uh, I think we're going to use everything about the Fourier, about the radon transform and uh, about inverse problems that uh, we've come up with up to now. Okay, the practical problem is, uh, suppose you want to construct a new CT scanner. So uh, that means you want to build one. And uh, of course you will have to do the reconstruction algorithm. You will have to implement it. Uh, the first thing um, you will probably do is you will ask the doctors what they want. And uh, probably they will tell you something like, okay, we want to see objects down to a size epsilon. Okay, uh, we already saw in our chapter on sampling that uh, this boils down to you must be able to recover the Fourier coefficients, the Fourier transform uh, f hat of xi for norm of xi smaller than some omega. And uh, if you can, then uh, actually you can see objects of a certain size. And uh, we'll never talk about that epsilon ever again. So for us, it means what we want to do is we want to be able to recover the Fourier coefficients of some function f up to a limit omega. Next thing is uh, in the sampling chapter, I told you that uh, usually the band limit is given with the infinity norm. And uh, it's a little bit more convenient to, to, to take the Euclidean norm here. Um, it doesn't make any difference because they're all equivalent anyway. We are in a finite dimensional space. So um, I will just take the two norm here and you will see some of the um, formulas will have to be adapted, but you're going to see that. Uh, the next assumption is, um, I told you that it's not okay to just forget about Fourier coefficients beyond omega, that uh, they might have an impact. Uh, remember when we did the sound example, when we did the sound experiment, there was that aliasing thing. Um, we'll completely ignore the aliasing problems here. And we'll just simply assume that F is band limited with a band limited, band limited of omega. And um, so, um, and of course not band limited, but essentially band limited because we'll also assume that F has compact support. So uh, we have these two requirements. F has compact support, I think in the unit sphere and uh, f is essentially band limited with band limit omega and we want to recover all the Fourier coefficients of f um, which are smaller than omega so that that means we want to discover we want to recover f hat everywhere and that gives us the function f okay um some practical things again uh, i've already told you a little bit about parallel sampling so we assume that we will not be able to measure the, the radon transform everywhere but we assume that we'll only be able to measure them at some discrete points so um i already uh, talked about parallel sampling and the setting was there that we can measure the free, the radon transform of f on equispaced on p equispaced directions uh, on the uh, in the unit sphere and uh, for some um equally distributed sensors from minus one to one. So we assume that F has a support of minus one in the, um, uh, in the unit sphere, okay? And uh, so that SL needs to be from minus one to one, RF is zero outside. And uh, also uh, we have P directions that we measure in and we had two Q plus one sensors. So uh, we have a sensor, the sensors are located at X positions K, uh, uh, L over Q, excuse me, from L from minus Q to Q. And the directions on the half sphere are given by phi K equals to K pi over uh, K pi over K pi over P, right, K pi over P. Um, and uh, so that's, uh, these are the directions and that's all, that are the locations of the sensors. 
Um, the question is, uh, of course, we want we do not want to work too much. So we want to have P and Q as small as possible. Um, that's quite obvious. I mean, if I have too much, uh, if I have P too large, then I uh, take the measurements in too many directions. And that would mean that the patient gets a radioactive dose that's higher than it needs to be. So uh, we want to choose P as small as we can. Same thing for Q. If we have too many sensors, then um, the uh, area that is covered by each single sensor is small. So we have we need to use a higher radioactive dose for each single shot. And uh, so again, that's something we do not want. So we want to choose P and Q as small as possible, but still we want to be able to recover F uniquely from these measurements. Now, uh, it seems that uh, on first glance, it seems that this is impossible because we have only discrete uh, values over here and we want to recover the full function f. But uh, again, um, f is band limited. And of course, we'll have to somehow use that. And uh, the idea will be the following. Um, f is band limited, omega band limited. That's what we proposed. And we'll show that then G equals to the radon transform of F is also, omega, is also band limited with a different band, but it's also band limited. And then we can use the sampling theorem uh, and uh, we can recover the radon transform everywhere. And then we can do the inverse transform. And somehow we also have to do something about the L-postness because uh, the, the algorithm that I had up to now was filtered back projection, but we also already noted that this is discontinuous. So uh, it's definitely not going to work without any regularization. Okay, uh, in the following, I will more or less quote uh, the book by Natura, which I um, already linked in the lecture. So uh, if you have any problems with this, then uh, definitely. Sorry, my loudspeaker was, I don't know. Okay, uh, so we'll follow the book by Natura, which I already linked to. Uh, and uh, if you want to know something more about the math, I will not do everything 100% perfect, not everything 100% correctly. Um, there it is done the right way. So uh, you might want to look that up. Okay, um, so uh, we're talking about implementation of the inverse radon transform. And uh, we'll uh, start out not from the filtered back projection, because that's a discontinuous formula, but uh, we'll start out from theorem 3.7, which we proved at some point and which seemed rather pointless at that point because um, it, it didn't seem to give us any new ideas, but we'll look at it from a different perspective now. Theorem 3.7 said that for any uh, small v in S of C, so uh, that's a data function, we have that uh, the uh, back projection applied to the convolution of v and g gives us the uh, convolution of capital V and F, where capital V is given by the adjoint of, is the, um, uh, excuse me, um, where capital V is the back projection of small v. Okay, um, the idea will be the following. We'll choose v in such a way that this reconstruction formula is exact. And um, so how, what, what would be the easy way of uh, choosing uh, capital V such uh, uh, that this formula is exact? Well, if we can choose small v in such a way that capital V is delta, then over here we have uh, the uh, convolution of capital V and F. So that's now the convolution of the delta distribution of F. And uh, we already saw that the convolution of delta distribution and some function is just the sum. This is just the function. So that's f again, and of course, then the formula is exact. Um, 
that sounds great, but uh, we'll see that to get V, capital V, V as the delta distribution, uh, we need to choose small V in such a way that this over here becomes just filtered back projection again. And we saw, we said, okay, we won't, don't want to use that because it's discontinuous. Uh, now let's look at that from a slightly different point. Let's uh, look at this from a Fourier perspective. Then um, the uh, convolution of capital V and F uh, is the same as the convolution of uh, V and F Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform. And uh, now using the convolution theorem, we have that this is nothing but the Fourier transform of capital V times the Fourier transform of F tilde. And we have that factor of two pi of n over two. Okay, um, now again, if we, uh, if we can choose a small v in such a way that capital V is delta, then why is the formula exact from the Fourier perspective? Well, um, if we look at it in a distributional sense, then um, and v is delta, then v hat is nothing but 2 pi over minus n over 2. Then uh, that's to, to the minus n over 2. That's something we already proved. And of course, if I plug this in, uh, then the 2 pi minus n over 2 times 2 pi n over 2 vanishes, and we have nothing but f uh, hat uh, tilde over here, so that's v, uh, f again, and of course, as we said, uh, v star f is f, but uh, again, it doesn't um, give us any insight because uh, that would again leave, lead, uh, lead to filter back projection. Now, if we assume that f is omega band limited, uh, then we have a different choice. And uh, let's just take any function, capital um, uh, such um, that capital V hat of psi is two pi to, uh, to the minus n over two for norm psi uh, smaller or equal whoops, to omega. And I don't care what that function is for norm psi larger than omega. Okay, so let's do exactly the same thing as before again. So V star, capital V star uh, um, convolution with F is the same as V hat times F hat tilde uh, times two pi to the N over two. Um, but now we have um, a strange thing because uh, if norm psi is smaller or equal to omega. So if we evaluate this over here for norm size smaller than omega, uh, then uh, the value is two pi to the minus n over two. And that means that v hat times f hat is just f hat. Uh, time, times the two pi over n over two over here is, uh, is just f hat. Now, what happens for norm psi larger than omega? Well, then f hat of psi is zero anyway. And, um, anyway, and uh, even if we multiply it with some f v hat over here, it just doesn't matter. That stays zero. So this is also uh, uh, um, the same as f hat, uh, even outside of, uh, even if we take the argument larger than omega. Okay, um, so this is always f hat, what we have in here. We take f hat tilde, and now that's f. Okay, so that means if we have an omega band limited function, then we do not have the requirement that capital V needs to be two pi to the minus n over two everywhere, but it needs to be two pi to the minus n over two only there where f hat really matters, and that's uh, in the uh, for an argument smaller than omega. Okay, so now we have a lot of choices, and uh, the idea will be the following: we will choose small v in such a way that capital V of Xi set is about two pi to the minus n over two for norm Xi smaller than, no, not one, smaller than omega. Same thing here. Oops. Mm. Now you get the idea.
and uh, we choose it roughly as zero for norm psi larger than omega. And uh, we'll see that um, um, from the analysis we just did, we saw, okay, then still that's a valid reconstruction formula. So that's an exact exact reconstruction formula that we're getting. We're going to V, capital V convolution with F will be equal to F. And um, well, we have the hope that this could be continuous. And in fact, we will show that it is. Okay, now, uh, but now we're faced with a problem because uh, now we have a requirement on capital V and uh, what we want to choose is small v, so the uh, function that we want to convolve our data with. And uh, so um, the question is, how do we choose small v if we have a requirement on capital V? And the next theorem is going to tell us how that is done.